<laughs> that hair is fantastic. Everybody remembers you with the with the hair. That's yeah. all I can remember is the hair came right here and went around like a. How did that happen? It that was, it's everybody it's thought it was a comb. <laughs> you still do it? Where is it? Yes. There you go. <laughs> Oh, that's great. <laughs> no, no, no. Yeah. Show you I'm a fan. <laughs> <laughs> hey, well, now, all I can think of is those crazy things which kids see you do. Yeah. Now, do, do you ever get letters from mothers, irate mothers, saying, "How dare you no, do never, that?" My never irate mothers. Uh, confused parent teachers associations. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> they uh, are isolated cases, and. Uh, this child psychologist, where they took the shows off in Cleveland on account of it, yeah. they got this child psychologist and they said, uh, could anything that the Stooges do in their films hurt a child and cause them to do things that normally they wouldn't? She said, no, I'm a lover of the Stooges myself. But if a family has a problem child, then it doesn't make any difference that you'll watch a Western where they're killing people, they'll have to grab a gun and kill somebody. But a normal child never gets anything difficult out of the Stooges comedies. Well, my kids, yeah, very good, you're right, and they love it, they love it. Is it yeah. your kids? Yeah, my kids do the same things that I did when I fell in love with the Three Stooges. Oh, they go on doing the imitations, they imitate everybody. Highly educational. Yeah, but they love it. <laughs> yes, it is. Now, you're one of, I said one of the originals. Now, Curly passed away, didn't he? Shall I give you the chain of command? Yeah, please. Okay. You, used to, you guys used to be with Ted Healy, right? Yes, I was the first one with Ted. Ted was a boyhood friend of mine. So he went in one branch of show business, and I went in another. I was the first one with Ted. He asked me to come. I met at the Prospect Theater in Brooklyn. I happened to go back to say hello to him. He was with his Wait a wife. minute, Brooklyn got a little murmur out there. Yeah, okay. It's coming Brooklyn, back. Go the ahead. Pros the Prospect Theater in Brooklyn. <laughs> and then... I was going in the stage door, and he was coming out and said, Mo, just the guy I want to see. My acrobat left me. He was doing the toe-to-toe -to -toe catch, you know. So he says, my acrobat left me. Can you help me out till I get a new one? You, you can still do the backflip, can't you? I said, backflip where? <laughs> we used to do it on the sand on the beach. He said, I said, but under the stage, there's concrete. <laughs> if I make a fall, the bubble here goes disappear. <laughs> I think you just lost your you guys. So, uh... So he says, help me out for a week. Well, the week lasted 11 years. Well, when did all that start, that slapping? Well, Healy started that. He smacked the hell out of us to begin with. <laughs> and I was smart. I took Healy's place later on. <laughs> but how did... <laughs> when, when did the other two guys come into the act? Curly and... and well, let me uh, tell you. And, and, and I was with Ted first. Yeah. Then my older brother, Shemp. Oh, yeah. yeah in sure. 1923, we were on the stage and I heard somebody laugh. And I said, Ted, Shemp's out there. So he walks to the front right and says, I'd like to have a young man from Brooklyn preferred to come up here. <laughs> up comes Shemp with a pair of rubbers in his pocket. Of course, no matter any city he went to, he had a pair of rubbers stashed away in a check room in case it rained when he was there. <laughs> <laughs> now he comes up on the stage eating a pair with a rubber thing. And he asked Ted if he wanted a bite. Ted says, no, I don't want no bite. And finally the pair wound up in one of their faces. It became Ted, Mo, and Shemp. In 1925, we were off a couple of days from Schubert's show, A Night in Spain. Look at That's me it. nodding like I know. I don't know. Yeah. Schubert's show, A Night in Spain. I'm following you. It was 1927. Oh, okay. okay. Now we're at the Marigold Gardens watching the show, and here comes this little fella in tails and a high hat and a violin. <laughs> he starts playing a violin like this. Not good, but no, you know. And uh, doing a Russian dance at the same time, playing the violin. So Healy looked at me and said, uh, well, are you thinking what I'm thinking? I said, yeah, let's talk to him. We watched the rest of the show. We went back in the dressing room. He had a robe on. He had wet his hair. And while we're talking to him, his hair started to crawl up in knots like, you know. <laughs> <laughs> it was drying out, see? He didn't have his finger in a socket or no. anything. No. <laughs> so uh, Healy looked at him and said, hey, you're single out there. It's not too hot. You want to join with the other two boys and become oh, three? My, he says, I'd love it. He says, I'll give you 90 bucks a week and $10 more to throw that fiddle away. <laughs> <laughs> and he threw it away, and it became three in 1925 with Ted. Now, he went all the way down the line with Ted, Shemp and I, Larry Shemp and I, 
In 1932, Shemp got the opportunity to play the character Nobby in the Joe Palooka pictures on the coast. I remember, yeah. Yeah, he didn't want to go. He said, what are you going to do for another guy? I said, Shemp, go. It's a great opportunity for you. We'll get the kid brother, Curly. You know, Curly was my younger brother. Oh. And he was with Orville Knappen Band. He was doing, he was a guest conductor. Uh, like this? Yeah. And the faster he went, the more the suit fell apart. He wound up in long underwear with a flap in the back <laughs> with a big lock. You know, in the thing. With a lock on yeah, the, the big thing on the rumble seat there. <laughs> so then it became... He played only the better rooms with that act. Oh, sure. <laughs> we played one in Chicago called the Black and White Society. Yeah, they wear black dress shirts and white, white tails. Marvelous. We got booked in there, Ted and we guys. We got booked into this beautiful hotel, and we're wandering around, and, and the booking woman comes home and says, please, you're not to mingle with the guests. Uh -oh. Five minutes later, one of the guests vomited all over Larry's suit. <laughs> <laughs> we get up to do the act. The piano, the piano player's playing. My good old hometown, Chicago. Yeah. <laughs> the piano player's playing, and Healy's, uh, we start to do with the jokes, and all of a sudden, French rolls start coming up. <laughs> they were throwing things Throwing. Out. Hit the piano player twice, and Healy says, hold out for roast beef. <laughs> 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 So, uh, to, to keep going with the thing, it became Curly, I, and Larry from 1932 to 1946. And you did all those pictures, though? Yes. Was I right, 196, or were there more? There were 200. 200? Yes. And then uh, Curly, in 1946, had a stroke. Right in the middle of a picture, at the tail end of a picture. Incidentally, a picture that my wife wrote called Hoi Polloi in Society. See? Poor fellow, and then he lingered and lingered. We tried to build his morale up and put him in a picture with us and so on. Didn't work. Shemp returned in 1946 and became Shemp Larry and Moe again. Curly passed away in 1952, and Shemp passed away in 1955. Then you get another Curly. Yes. Later now, on. you see, this was an awfully troublesome right. to me because I had to break these guys in. You know that. Yeah. So now we, we, we can't get the fellow we have now. There's Joe Dorita, which we had recently. Yeah, the little chubby guy. Burlesque. You know, sure. He was signed up with Minsky. We couldn't get him. So we got Joe Besser. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. not so hard. Not so hard. Yeah. The guy does that. So he yeah. finished the two years. We had a 24-year contract at Columbia. He had finished the two years. 24 years. Straight, contract. no options. <sighs> Until unconscious. What? <laughs> Four.